Hello everyone. In the next few lectures, we are going to talk about design thinking, the methodology that you already know. Now, we're going to start talking about design thinking in a little bit more intuitive perspective and in a little bit different way. So let's see. Design thinking, okay, when you look at these diagrams, you can see only one difference here. Basically, what we want to do is to compare Lean Startup and design thinking. A lot of people already know we're going to have to start, some, start building something, MVPs, and iterate and pivot. And we do exactly the same thing with design thinking as well. However, the main difference here is that in a Lean Startup, this is how it goes. Okay, I have this great vision and great product, great technology. How do I get this to the customers? If that was a Lean Startup, design thinking is more about Okay, there are people that need something. How do I build something that'll solve their problems? So starting points are completely different between these two methods. Now let's move on to something that we already know. Now look at this. There is an understanding part, create and deliver. So this is pretty much what you're familiar with, empathy stage and then define IDA prototype and test. One thing you have to understand is, okay, let's look at these triangles. They represent divergence stage and convergence stage. So in empathy stage, we gather information to understand customers. And in a defined stage, we narrow it down to one or two. Problem statement that we can actually work on. And then we do the um, ideation stage and we generate creative ideas. For some reason, people have been emphasizing on how to generate ideas using design thinking and how to understand customers during the uh, empathy stage. So they talk a lot about this divergent stage, generating more ideas, gathering more information. They don't really talk about how to narrow it down to one specific problem that you can work on and how to choose the final solution using design thinking technology. So I've been talking with a lot of startups and they are very familiar with design thinking tech methodology. And what they do is they generate ideas over and over and over. They have thousands of creative ideas, but they cannot just make up their mind on one solution they really need to work on. So today's lecture, what I like to focus on is abductive reasoning. Okay, it has various meanings, but I like to talk about two aspects of this. One, we say the design thinking is abductive reasoning because it integrates two things, analytical thinking and intuitive thinking. Because we combine these two, we get more creative ideas that we can actually work on. When people think of design thinking, they always think of these post-ups. On the wall, there are hundreds of post-its. They are, people are talking to each other. They are trying to cut it. They are trying to filter it down. They are trying to combine the ideas to come up with the better ideas. Yes, that is part of design thinking, but rather that is a part of ideation process. Design thinking projects, they aim to support creativity in generating a larger quantity of ideas and filtering it down and cut it down to one best, most practical, and most innovative idea that you can actually work on. When you look at it that way, design thinking is a very solution focused, not idea generation focused. Okay, keep this in mind. Design thinking is very solution focused. And this is the part people tend to forget about. Design thinking is very evidence-backed, not so much on intuition. Oh, wait a minute. I heard that design thinking was a more creative, intuitive thinking. Yes, in an ideation stage. But at the same time, design thinking focuses on how to get it down to one solution that you can actually work on. If you want to do that, it's a very evidence-backed. It's not about your intuition. It's not about your vision. It's more about what customers want, what customers need, and what the market needs. Therefore, unless you are ready, to combine these all parts of development, design thinking is not going to work. So let's take a look at this one. This is the last diagram that we are going to look at today. There's a divergence stage and there's a convergence stage. 
from empathy to a problem, finding the problem, if you want to do that, yes, you need to gather as much information as possible. And then you have to define the problem that you can work on. That's, that requires art. You cannot just do that overnight. You have to do it over and over and over, and at some, at some point you're going to get it. Oh, I thought design thinking was a creative problem-solving technique, so I have to be creative. Yes, when you are trying to generate the ideas. When you know the problem, then you can think about how to solve the problem in a creative way. We are going to spend some time on talking about how to do that, but you have to keep in mind, it's not so much about just keep, it's not so much about generating creative ideas over and over and over. Generate the ideas, and then cut it down to one specific one that you can work on. That's part of design thinking, and that's the core part of design thinking. Unless you are doing it, you are not doing, you are not really adopting design thinking methodologies. You are just doing the um, ideation, ideation techniques. You are just using ideation technique developed by all the other methods. So let's recap. Design thinking is not so much about intuition, it's more evidence-backed. Design thinking is a very solution-focused. Design thinking is an abductive reasoning that integrates analytical thinking and intuitive thinking at the same time. There's a divergence stage and convergence stage. Unless you do a good job on convergence stage to find one that you can work on, then it's not going to work. So we are going to talk about empathy, define, that includes first two, as in divergent stage and convergent stage. And then we are going to talk about ideation as well. Once we do that, we are going to talk about how we integrate this whole process into Agile Scrum so we can do a proper and effective project management. Again, don't forget, it's solution focused, evidence backed. It's not so much about generating ideas, it's about choosing the one that you really like that'll work from all those ideas that you generated. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you next time.